Hello everybody, this is Ernest Gonzalez with EdTech and Design Office of 21st Century Learning and today I'm going to be showing you some tips for using iPads. Now the first thing we want to talk about is the app portal, this blue and yellow icon that you see on your screen. I'm going to click this now but it may show up sideways on your screen. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that this app is what you use to be able to download other apps, approved apps from the district. This is important because you will need to be able to install Seesaw in case you are a pre-K, kinder, first, or second grader using Seesaw on iPads. It does need this app. You can search for apps, but the main thing is when you click on an app, you will have the yellow install button over here. Press that button and then just check your home screen on your iPad to see that it installs. It may not happen right away. It may take about a minute or two, but this is how you can install apps on these iPads. Now, the other thing we want to tell you about is that uh, you want to be able to sign into ClassLink because ClassLink has all of the apps and tools that are district approved that you can use on the iPad. These are resources like textbooks, BrainPop, and Canvas, one of the main things we're talking about today in this video. So in order to get to it easier, we've put a ClassLink web icon onto your iPads, and this is what you wanna click here to get to it, okay? So when you do that, this is the screen that you will see. You will type in your username, and you will put in your password. Your teachers are gonna be able to give you a username and passwords to sign in, so be sure to check in with them or call the School Start hotline to get that information. Once you've signed into ClassLink, again, these are all of the resources that you have for you available, including Canvas, which we're talking about today. So Canvas is where your teachers will post all the learning resources, assignments, quizzes, and more. So that's what I'm gonna be clicking on right now to launch Canvas. A little bit about Canvas. Of course, you have the dashboard, which is going to display all of your different courses. If this looks a little bit different, this menu right here can adjust your dashboard from a list view to recent activity, and then back to card view. Card view is a view that I like because it helps me easily see all my different courses that I belong to. Some other things you wanna pay attention to is number one, the calendar. Be sure to check your calendar regularly or every day because this is gonna help you see events, assignments, Zoom links, uh, links to tutoring, and more. And be sure to notice that there's a way to adjust to see the calendar by week, month, or agenda view. And then notice that you also have all of your, you have a calendar for each of your courses, so you can turn these off and on by clicking on the little colored squares that you see right here. You can also go to inbox right here on the left hand side. This is important because this is your email from within Canvas. You don't have to go anywhere else to check your email. So you will see messages from your teachers show up here, but you can also write your own email by pressing the pencil. It asks you to select your course. In this example, I'm going to send an email to my teacher in science. I can click right on this little person icon here find my teacher by clicking on teachers and then just like a regular email I can type in the subject on top this one's gonna be about homework I will turn it in today I'm going to click send and send that to my teacher right now let's take a moment to go back into our dashboard Again, I wanted you to see that you have a to-do list over here on the right-hand side. But right now, I want to talk about going into one of our courses. So let me go ahead and click on this title right here to go into this course. The first thing that you'll see is the home page that your teacher has set up for you, including links to learn, help, parents, and resources. Learn is actually gonna take you to a page called modules, but we'll talk about that in just a second. The first thing that I wanna talk about is announcements. Announcements is very similar to the inbox, except this announcement area is just for this particular course. So your teacher may have turned announcements on. 
Your teachers can customize this menu that you see here. So you may not see home announcements. You will probably see modules, but you may not see grades and syllabus. These are some things we have turned on inside of this course. So I'm gonna click on this announcement to take a look at what this message is. As you can see, this particular message, it appears to be a video. So your teachers can type messages but they can also record videos as well. Hey everybody, this hey everybody, is Mr. Gonzalez. Welcome, Gonzalez. To class. Welcome to class. So that one's a video. I'm going to go back into modules. Be sure to check those every day. Your inbox, calendar, and announcements. Now in my module view, this is the actual work that my teacher is going to be posting for me. This could be um, pages. It can be assignments. There's different types of assignments. And then there can be even quizzes. So right now, I'm going to click on the first one here called Lesson Intro. This is an example of a page. Now, a page may not have anything to turn in, but they can have images, text, and videos. This is an example of a page that our teacher is basically giving us an introduction to the lesson. Pages are great because they include Immersive Reader, I'm going to press Immersive Reader now so you can see what Immersive Reader can do. Notice that the text showed up and there's a play button right down here. So Lesson click intro, play. page example, 3D painting of welcome. This is an example of a page. So it plays the text out loud for me. This is really great for our, our learners that are early readers. Notice that there's some other tools over here on the, uh, for example, this book. Uh, you can see I have picture dictionary turned on and I also have the ability to translate. So this is gonna be good for our students and families needing some language support. Notice that I can choose Spanish and I can have this translated by the word. So I'm gonna click page and notice that I have it in English and Spanish. I can play it in Spanish. Las páginas. Las páginas. And there's also a picture there to help me understand it. If I want the whole document translated, I can press document right here. And let's listen to it now. Introducción a la lección, ejemplo de página. Again, this is a really great tool that's available on pages inside of Canvas. I clicked back to get back. And I'm going to go back into modules again because that is where all of my learning exists. This is a module right here. It's almost like a unit or a piece of a lesson. The next example I'm gonna do is an assignment that, that is called a text assignment. So in this assignment, my teacher wants me to finish the sentence, I think blank or better pets because blank. So the first time you do this, it'll say submit. I've already done this before, so mine says resubmit. So I'm gonna press this blue button and notice that right down here, I have a text box where I can type in my answer. So here is my answer. Don't forget that iPads also have a way for you to dictate. You press the little microphone on the keyboard that comes up and your students can talk and it has that turned into text on screen. So this is really helpful. I'm going to press submit, but before I do that, I do want you to pay attention to the different tools that you have here to change it, to make it bold, to highlight, change the color, add links. Now these, uh, this, this tool right here that looks like a video, this is uh, on a laptop, this is a way for you to record a video into this box right here, but this feature does not work on an iPad. This is one of the things that's a little bit different. I'm gonna press submit now because I'm gonna show you the next example which will let you record video. So that assignment is turned in. Notice that I see September 2nd, 1146 AM. This is letting me know exactly the time that this was turned in. And when my teacher grades it, I may see comments come back here from my teacher. So let me go back into modules and let's take a look at the next example here. This one's a file upload example, also an assignment. Now in this assignment, my teacher wants me to actually draw on a piece of paper and turn that in. So 
Again, I will press the submit button up here. And on the iPad, it says choose a file. And I have the option to take a photo or video. I can pull something in from the photo library of my iPad. I can also browse for a file. So right now, I'm going to press take a photo. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a cool drawing here, but I have a sheet of paper. I can press video or photo, but I'll just take a picture. And right in the bottom corner, bottom right corner, it says use photo. If I needed to add more, I could say add another file. But at this point, I'm finished, I'd, and I'm going to press submit. And I've turned in my assignment as a drawing. I'm going to go back into modules again so I can show you a couple more examples. This next example here is an example of a Google assignment. Now, your teachers might um, use Google as a way to have you uh, view your own copy of an assignment. Now, the first time you see it, you may have to authorize like what I'm doing here to say that I have permission to go into my drive. And feel free to go ahead and do that. Notice that the this is telling me to get the app, but I can just say, no, I'm not interested. And I can actually do the work here on the iPad without needing any of the Google apps. Now, it is a little bit small and kind of hard for me to uh, work with, so I can click on the title of it right here, Dogs and Cats. And now the file opens up on a bigger screen in its own tab in Safari. I can add text, I can add images, I can move things around, I can do all of those awesome things. And what's great about Google is that anything that I do to this file is going to automatically save. When I'm finished doing whatever it is I need to with my work, I can just close out this tab here and Google automatically saves. So now I just need to press submit. That's the big, big thing you have to remember is press submit so that my teacher can see the work and give me feedback and tell me how I did on that. Another example is quiz. Now I've already taken this quiz so I can't show you exactly how it looks, but there are a variety of different types of questions that can be asked on quizzes. Your teacher may ask you multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, um, all types of different questions, even essay and file upload types of questions. The great thing about these quizzes is that you will, if your teacher has it turned on, you can see your score right away you can also see feedback from the teacher to let you know what you got correct and what you what you may have missed and then also some additional information and feedback for you to really help you out now this should give you a good tour of how to use the iPads with canvas uh, one other thing I do want to show you before we leave is what it looks like to use Seesaw with Canvas. And if we take a look, this is a, an example of a Seesaw activity. So my teacher has basically given me the directions to say, click on this link to complete your activity. And I have a link here. Notice we put in a second set of directions that says if, you know, if that doesn't work, you can always go to the Seesaw app and complete the activity. Okay just in case you need to do that. You're more than welcome to open up the Seesaw app and, and complete the activity that your teacher is asking you to do. Now, if your teacher did put your activity link here for Seesaw, this is what will happen when you click it. Notice that the app, the Seesaw app, pops up and it takes me directly to the activity that I need to complete. But the only reason it does this is because I have Seesaw downloaded and I had already signed in to Seesaw. Okay, don't forget, on Seesaw, you can sign in through the Google sign-in using your SAISD email address and password. Or if your teacher gives you a home learning code for Seesaw, you can use those because those are QR codes that will help you sign in as well. If you'll have any questions about any of this, please feel free to reach out to the Family Engagement Department. You can also talk to EdTech and Design or reach out to the SAISD help desk.